Welcome to the 3D Pendant! Recently I posted a video on how to make jewelry findings from 3D printing filament. If you missed it, the link is in the description. In it I made, among other things, a bunch of little jump ring components. And you know what that means. You can make chains of all different stripes. So let's look at how. When you need to hang something, let's say a pendant onto a neck ring, you will need something to connect it all. Jump rings are designed to connect one plane to a perpendicular plane, like so, hence the name. By the nature of this process, you will never make just one. And when you have so many, you might as well make chains from them. Let's take a quick look at how to get to this point. When you cut a piece of filament, it will retain the curve of the spool. We just need to tell it to remember a way smaller curve. And guess what? You don't even need a 3D pen or printer to do that. What you will need, however, is a water boiling kettle, rubber gloves, obviously the filament, and a rod of the diameter you want your jump rings to be. There are commercial jump ring making devices on the market. Some even fit the size of our filament. However, all you really need is something straight with a hole in it. The thin plumbing pipes or wooden dowels will do just fine. Also knitting needles are good and come in all convenient sizes. If you have something like a knitting needle that you can't really drill a hole in, just tape the filament to the end of it. Also, if you have one of those kettles that switches off when the water starts to boil, you may need to switch to the old-fashioned kind and do it on the stove because you need to maintain a roaring boil for the duration of this process. Whenever you are forming the plastic into a new shape, it is always about how much to heat it and where. For this job, I will use a stream of steam, which will be just hot enough to soften the filament but not over melt it. And doing it this way, I can easily control just what part I'm softening at the moment. By the way, the video on steaming and several other heating methods is in the description. Let's see a piece of this process in real time, so you get the idea of how slow you have to go. When making a coil, I want to heat the filament just a little piece at a time to be able to control how it's winding onto the dowel. And I need the heat to be just hot enough to soften it, to curb it, but not get it so soft that it will stick together. Steam is the perfect temperature for that. And please note, that this was only tested for PLA. It may not work for ABS. You would have to try it. Try to coil the plastic as evenly as possible. One strand right to the next. Do not overlap it, if you can help it. So you end up with the same size jump rings. Go slow enough for the heat to bend the filament without you having to pull at it, because some PLA filament stretches. 
For this particular job, you are better off with PLA Pro, which doesn't stretch at all and produces very even rings. Here is what I mean by that. This coil has very even rings and also stretches evenly, almost like a metal spring. This one may look similar at the first glance, but if you stretch it, you can see it has some kinks in it where the filament stretch too much. That doesn't mean you can't use it, but you may need to cut out those stretched parts and not use those particular rings. Next tool we'll need are flush cutting pliers that produce good straight cuts. It can be a bit of work to get the coils of the dowel. You can keep your rubber gloves on for a tight grip and keep twisting until the coil loosens from the forming rod. The longer the coil, the harder this gets. So you are better off making several two to three inch size coils rather than one long one. Now we're ready to cut it. Right where it makes a full circle. And we have a jump ring. If you skip one circle and cut it in the next one, you will get what is called a split ring, which is basically a keychain ring, which has the advantage that it will hold things on it without having to be sealed shut. Which brings us to how to seal jump rings, should you want them to be super safe. Twist it till the two ends really meet and use a wood burning iron with a skinny tip or a styrofoam cutter to seal it. Stick it together as fast as you can and hold it till it cools. This is what I mean by styrofoam cutter. It happens to have this thin slightly curved tip on it which is perfect for this job. So now that we have all these jump rings made Let's make a chain, starting with the simplest one. The filament jump rings need to be sealed because they are not as stiff as the metal ones and your links wouldn't be safe. If the process gets a little messy, take off the residue with the cutters or even a file. Then add on the next one. And repeat. And we have little tooling chain. And then keep on going. until you have the length you need. Split links chain is easier because you don't have to seal anything. Make the coils as usual. But cut only every other full circle. With smaller rings it may be easier to cut them right on the forming rod. That way they don't fly all over the place and you can also see better where to cut it next. And then just wind them onto each other. Joining filament split rings is actually way easier than metal ones because they tend to be not as stiff until you have a chain. Then you can use an S hook to close it.
and you're done. These are my favorites because it produces more decorative, richer looking chain. Speaking of more decorative, richer looking chains, this is where the fun really starts. If you would like oval links, then use two dowels or knitting needles taped together. Wind as usual. And of course, you can cut them as either singles or multiples as desired until you have an oval chain. Remember the S hook we used to close the split ring chain? Well, you can also mass produce those. Just tape a spacer between your two knitting needles and you can get a bit creative with your winding. Cut them and you can use them as closures or make different style of chains from them. Which can then be used as is, or you can take it a step further and add beads to it. like so. You can combine jump rings with splits, different sizes and colors. Perhaps like so. Combinations are endless. And from all this, it is only a tiny step to making chain mail. But that really should be a different video. So until next time, go and make something.